Welcome to Physical Science in the AM. I'm your host, Joel Shindelka, and hot dog, we got an out-of-type class today. Hello, Paige. I'm going to pause the uh, record and update the attendance. Darius, I've got you. Corey, can you scooch one over? I will bring up. So, right there where Cora just exited from. Perfect, Darius. I'm going to update attendance. Remind me later, Darius, because I got some homeroom stuff for you from yesterday, okay? Later, like, as in home in the classroom. This being first period, I I don't want it, but I expect that we'll have more late than you do normally in another class. So, Where was I on my record? Okay, wave unit. We're starting the wave unit for real. And everybody's got their hand out, I hope. So the first few things. Get some terminology before we get into uh, an experiment. <coughs> All right. Okay. Good. Oh, you guys have these. There's the terms. First one is one of those oscillations. I'm just making sure we're familiar with the word. We don't need to copy the oscillation. Oscillation, the repetitive fast and fast motion. Oscillation called a cycle. Now, I'm going to demonstrate this. I want to pull up the video, but if you're talking about an oscillation, what could be back and forth? Because we're just counting out 10. But, you guys get them both counting out 2. And I'm not there with 10. So, you get the idea. That's one. Two. Three. Just move back and forth. Don't think that it's one. Two. Three. 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 Four. So it doesn't have to be at the end. You could count it the same amount of time for it to go to center. One. You guys follow that too? But it makes more sense. Oscillatory motion is where the period of each cycle is. Well, you think about it doesn't have to be a tick tock, it doesn't have to be a, a pendulum kind of motion. It could be something like a tire rotating on. If you're going to steady speed on your car, each rotation is whatever rotation per minute. Actually, RPMs on a car, what does that measure? It's not the tire, so what is it? Sheldon. Okay, there you go. It's inside the motor. But, but there's all kinds of RPMs and uh, rotations per minute. Well, we'll figure out what that is right away. Because it's not a period of time. It's one of those cycles or rotations of a period of time. So P is the period of one oscillation measured in time. F is the frequency. That's what RPM is. But we're going to use it per second. And you guys have probably heard of Hertz before, as in megahertz. But where have you seen hertz, megahertz, kilohertz, and stuff like this? Anyone? You've never you've heard of it? What's that? Yes, on electronics and stuff like this. You'll often see. And it's like a refresh rate sometimes and stuff like this. How many megahertz? Uh, anyway, you'll see it. And those are usually in megahertz. You guys know what mega and kilo, or kilo, I hope you know. Megahertz, 
jot down. One kilohertz. Kilohertz. How many hertz? How many cycles is that? That kilo. Thousand. Yeah. You can figure it out. Thousand. Jot this down because I was expecting to know what kilo means. The other way, though, with scientific notation, I think you're all familiar with 10 to the, like, the grade 9 and a half. Well, I'm sorry. That's 10 to And then if I go with megahertz, now kilo is for kilometers and stuff like this, each hertz. One megahertz. This is for the astro, if you're not familiar. What's a megahertz? I'm not even going to write out one to six zeros, one million. I'm going to put down 10 to the six zeros. Just because that's what you'll see on electronics. That's a lot of cycles to set. You're not going to be able to time that and count how quickly that happens. But electronics and stuff like this does happen. Okay. Real quickly then, there's a couple of the calculations. Examples here. I have the actual. I told you why I didn't do these exercises. But let's just try this out. Because really and truly, this formula here is pretty simple. Frequency is 1 over the time series, so 1 cycle. Does it make sense? The old switcheroo, as in. If you switch F and T, mathematically, T is equal to 1 over F. Okay, follow what I'm saying there. But that's because you can multiply the T up and then divide the number down. I'm not going to worry about it too much. But I'll just write down N. If you're not nifty with numbers and algebra, you might want to. Let's go for solve. I'm going to put down the Earthquake waves travel along the Earth's surface and have periods, that's capital P. Don't use a small P, by the way. We save that for other up to five minutes. What is their frequency? Well, to do things in hertz is in seconds, not minutes. So I'll keep it simple. One, it's a period of time. I'm going to put M I N. Don't put M because that's meters. I think you intuitively know that it's going to be a lot of seconds. You multiply by 60. But I want to just start showing something. We know, and I want to get rid of minutes, so I put minutes on the bottom. One minute for every 60 seconds. Right? Now, this is where Without a calculator, if you can, use a calculator and all that. Okay, I don't care. But not a phone. 300 seconds. Now, that being said, I do a lot of math in my head and I make a lot of work. So, um, I think this is 300, right? Yep. What if you have it in seconds and you can get to frequency in hertz? Frequency is typically measured in electric pulse time. We're talking about an engine and so on, rotations per minute. Then you'd use the frequency. Once you have the period in seconds, you say it's one divided by the 300 seconds. Where am I getting that from? I kind of went. I'm using that. I have no clue off the top of my head. So I would actually enter it in as 1 divided by 300. You see the same thing. 
literally any fraction you can think of as a division function, right? Most likely you type it in, and I'm fine with it. It's going to go on and on and on and on and on. And on. There's two ways to give the what it says for her. So I know it hurts me per second. If you want to, I'll do this temporarily. Seconds to the negative one, but why? Mathematically, what is seconds to the negative one? What is exponents to the negative one? You guys remember this? So I have to back up and do some math. Big nine. So if I have x cubed over x to the 4, what's the rule with exponents? I'm going to erase this because it's like, what do you do with exponents when you're dividing? Another way of thinking of this is simplify have no negative numbers. There's more x's on the bottom than the top, right? So you say I can cancel out x cubed on the top and the bottom, and I'm left with one over x. Right. Now, do you see that they're the same thing? Right. X cubed really means on the bottom per second. I told you I'm not going to teach that. I'm going to put it down. That's what hurts me. Okay. If you put x to the minus 1, I'm fine with that. Or even if you put, well, if you did this and just put over seconds, that'd be the same thing. And I'm fine with that. But you'll see hurts me. Oh, now, scientific notation. You guys are familiar with that. I don't mind if you put point zero zero two two two. How many digits do you keep as a function? Anybody have a, a, a folder rule before about how many digits you keep? Nine. Okay. Generally, if you multiply and you divide, you have three digits to start. This is what we call significant digits. I actually wouldn't pay it. Notice with the five minutes, there was a reason why they said 5.00 minutes. You know, if, I, if, um, if someone asks to go to the washroom, don't worry, I'll be back in five minutes. Do you think they mean 5.00 minutes? That's, that's a non-significant. That's the combined ish, give or take a minute, right? If I say five, Oh, well, I make zero one six. Let's use this right here. If I say 5.00, I mean five minutes. Quite precisely, right? Measure that. So that means that this 300 seconds is, it's not 301, it's not 302, it's not 298, right? It's 300 minutes, three digits. Now, when you do the division, you should keep three digits in your hands, but non zero. The front zeros are just there to hold it down. Now, I'm not going to teach strictly on this yet, but as the course goes on, I'll kind of train you that way. Generally, it's three digits in and multiplying and dividing. It's three digits in the hand. Don't go with a 17 or 30 seconds. It goes on for three digits. Scientific notation wise, when you see the answer, how do you come up with that 10 to the minus 2? Or have you seen it? You guys have done this, right? No? So what does 10 to the minus 3 mean? Well, remember seconds to the minus 1 means 1 over seconds. 10 to the minus 3 means 1 over 10, 10, 10, 10. Now, that'll 
Remember place values in grade five or something like that? The first place value is 10 to the minus one. 10 to the minus two is 100. What was the tens position, the hundredth position, and the thousandth position? You guys remember this, right? Now we're one, two, three over is the thousandth position. That's why we use 10 to the minus 3, right? You don't have to know it. Man, but really, all you have to do is just say, I move the delta one, two, three spots before it to find the first non zero digit. Okay. Three, point three, which I moved the decimal over three times. And it took a smaller sign. That'll turn. That's where the I'm not getting pissed that you put your answers in that, but you're going to see the measurements of the And I'll show you some things about your calculator that are going to be useful. So you get an EXT button, EQ button, it depends what brand of calculator you have. That's what it's going to be. But you get, that's the same number. Question two. Common is common. With a frequency of 78 hertz. This is the other way around. We're given frequency. Over frequency for 78 hertz. That means 78 wind clouds per second, right? Should be up, down, and up, down. It's a period. It's really, really small in our spectrum, right? Have you ever seen a hummingbird? You can't really see its wings because it's so fast. So remember how this formula, this is the way I'm going to give you the formula on the quiz. Did you know, did you have a question or did you know? That's okay, that's fine. The old switcheroo, so basically I multiply up the T and I divide down the M. I can just switch back and forth. So I'm going to go with T. 1 over L, 1 over 70, 78, and I'm going to put the hertz down at seconds to the minus 1 for myself. You can put it here. I don't mind. But this reminds me that when I actually flip this number, I'm going to have seconds as my number, not minutes, not hours. And I wouldn't be able to just go on through the last time. So I actually literally every division problem or every fraction with a division problem. You get 0182. I'm going to erase that. I know it's seconds because Hertz goes back and forth between seconds and Hertz. So I'm going to erase that. But maybe I won't erase it. I'll just show it. Why? How many decimals or how many digits, not decimals, how many digits should I keep in my answer according to the given information? How many was in here? The two, don't count the front zero, two digits. So you have to use proper rounding. If I round that, I can't just cut it off at the two. You can ask yourself, at eight, Boost it up, right? Round it up. You guys know that, right? Five and higher. On a number line, it's closer to zero one two than it is to, or zero one three than it is to zero one two. Right? That's where I get this. Yeah. Hopefully, you've gotten your sum. That's basically all the problems are you can solve for F. Stop the recording in a minute here. And there's way long video. But you're going to get it from this if you can, right? So that's the reason I'm talking. That's the chat. I can just quickly stop the recording. We're going to run through this lab here.
We'll talk about responding variables and stuff like this. Pause the record. So, first, we're going to do three different rounds. Let's see how much we get. The first one, manipulating variables. What we're changing is the mass. As, so, as you can see on our data chart, I'm not going to use grams, stuff like this. We're just going to, they're going to roughly be the same. One stuff, they're all the same stuff. They probably do vary a little bit. So close enough that it's the same. Then we'll double the mass. Two stocks. And three stocks. Okay? So you get the idea. So 50 grams would be 100 grams and then 150. It doesn't matter how much mass you have. We're going to time it for 10 cycles. The reason why I don't want to just do one cycle is when it's one cycle, and you press, you know what? Okay. When it's just one cycle, it comes down to that's such a short amount of time. It comes down to your sum reaction time in terms of the reaction. I'm assuming you guys can use your phone. So if you do it with 10, there's less uh, error in a stack or in a count. That's the point. So time for 10 cycles. Let's just say it was, I'll just make up a, a 17 seconds for 10 cycles. How much for one cycle is it? To divide by 10, yeah. And it's seconds. So that's your period. What you have, and I, you don't have to put the unit in because I have it as a header. Everything under there should be one. And once you figure out what 1.7 seconds, you know, you can easily come up with a frequency formula, a one over period, and then divide it and actually get the decimal number. So it's two digits. I said 17 seconds. You guys have timers that have decimals on them. You're actually going to have 17.32 or something. Doesn't it have two decimals on your timer? I think it is. You're actually going to have 1.732, and then you're going to divide and get that frequency with four non zeros in front of you without counting the front end. Now, in math, mean, what does mean mean? Average. And it's the type of average where you add three up, divide it. Does it mean mean in a mode? Right? Where you can pick it. Okay. You're going to do it for those two. Then you're going to add a stop. So, we have to keep some things controlled. I can't. So one time I can't just go like uh, measure 10 degrees. I go for the first time. Okay, I count ahead. Then the next time, I don't really know what the heck it is. It's maybe 25 degrees. Let it go. And then the next time, so what do I have to keep control? What do I have to make sure it's the same every time? The angle, yeah. So, we're going to write this down. It's really simple. The release angle. We'll just put an angle here. I think we're what should we use as an angle? Not too big, though. Don't you? You'll be able to just hold this here. Now, I can't actually reach up that high. But you'll pull it back, and if this is at the top, the center here, you'll be able to see this is 20 degrees off or whatever, right? So, why don't we use 20 degrees? So, if this is 90 right here, you pull it back. The, the string is lined up with the 20. Does that make sense? Well, no. Let's just use 20. We just decided on one. It doesn't matter what it is as long as it's the same every time. 20 degrees. What else are we going to keep the same? We're changing the mass, manipulating that. What's the other variable that we're uh, making sure of? Three things we're looking at: mass, angle, and that one too. Oh, the perfect. Well, mass is what we're going to consider it somewhat. Yeah, the length. So I can't do it one time like this, and then the next time like this. It might be different because of length, not because of mass. So length. And 
will decide on the length that we'll use. slide up, but I think we got the 40s and 20s. So what we're controlling in this case is the other two variables. Uh, well, one stopper, mass we're controlling, one stopper, and angle. And we need 20 degrees in the first one. We should keep it 20 degrees. I'm not putting 20.0 degrees on this one because I know it's really hard to measure that that angle. It might vary between 18 and 20 degrees, give or take. Just because it's really hard to do that. And the responding variable, once again, is okay. yeah. I'm going to pause the recording.